Hello everyone. Um, one of the videos that I made um, back, wow, like 2017 I think, was when I started to really attempt to make videos and um, one of the very first decks I talked about um, was the medieval Scapini and how much I absolutely love this deck. Um, Scapini's done quite, quite a few other decks. Um, uh, and I'm the Romeo and Juliet or the Shakespeare deck, um, Kabbalah decks, um, he's even done an Oracle. Um, there's, there's a few, I think season four or five. Um, but this one is my favorite because um, it seems it's it feels like a like a Visconti deck in in the visuals. You know, you got the floppy hat, of course, and sort of the the, the colors and sort of the mock gilding. Um, if these cards ever came out like a golden edition, I would snatch that up so so fast because it seems like the gold ink uh, used does have a reflective quality, and one of the first decks I ever deviated from with my, my Rider weight was um, with the uh, Scapini deck. And it's just, it's just a very easy to use deck. It's wonderfully done. Uh, here's the little book which is all in English, 47 pages. This one is, it came out in 85, but this is the, I believe it's the 19th printing. Um, so it's been out and it is, it's pretty much standard. Um, the intro is written by Stuart Kaplan, of course. Um, combines medieval icons with the esoteric tradition that became publicly known. Um, let's see, influence of Cultists such as Pappas, Worth, and Edward Waite, among others. Alchemical processes color the cards. Many clues, often humorous to the means the cards are half hidden in the intricate pictures. Um, had Louis, Luigi Scapini lived during the Renaissance, the Visconti and Sforza families in Milan would surely have commissioned him to paint the Triumphi cards. The splendor of Scapini's cards with their beautiful imagery and uh, brilliant creativity would have been greatly admired by the ducal court. Ducal word reference to the duchy when Italy was all broken up into little pieces. So let's... I just want to look at the major arcana. I'm not going to go through the whole deck because, you know, I'm showing it. It's, it's decks did I see let's see I'm missing there's a card actually this deck is in order oh of course in the box trapped I just love that single trapped card in the box. It's quite in order. Well, let's see what we can look at. So here's the back. It's that golden inkish silver, so gold and silver. This would lend itself well to being gilded. And I love the creamy color of the, the borders and the background. So here's the coins. And you can see the sort of bodiness and the um, Those um, Marseille swirls and flourishes, just really lovely. And the colors are there. Look at that. Seven of Coins. Yeah, and the court cards. The court cards are so just well done. And there is some Hebrew letters there. If you look for them, they're there. Really an intricate deck. But those are just uh, my arcana. Here are 
the majors, which I really wanted to look at. Let's look at them a little closer. There we go. Let me get close. I wanted to get a good quality close-up of these because they are absolutely stunning. Where's my wand at? My little... Where'd it go? Oh, I have this vintage letter opener. I can point things out. I wonder where my little spatula went. I must have opened something with it. So here we have the knapsack. We have uh, like the feathers, the horns radiating out of the head. We have um, the precipice. We here we have the crocodile, which is kind of hidden right there. Um, it looks like a lion dog. It's ripped his tights, um, but it's jumped. It's leaped and uh, up. The club almost appears there, and as well as a staff, motley colors. But yeah, you could easily miss the crocodile right there. And Scapini had a great, um, just a great knowledge of studying the tarot and origins and history and all. So he he knew what he was doing. He he loves to put in the. Um, it draws influence from, from all over. If you notice, there was the flower at the bottom there. Uh, this one is, it looks like a poppy, to be honest, uh, with those jagged leaves. If I'm trying to you see it, trying to examine what it is, it looks like a poppy, which of course, poppies um, are associated with um, falling asleep, um, sort of not having your head on straight, which kind of fits with, with, you know, the fool, the uninitiated. Here we have another flower. It looks like a tree flower. I'm not, it's three, three leaves, but I can't quite tell. Here we have the three-legged table here. Um, wand, sword, coins, and cup. The sort of infinity symbol hat, chapeau. Looks like he has writing on his sleeves. It looks ornamental, but I believe that's writing. He's looking here. He's doing sort of a sleight of hand almost. The, the cup has red, I would guess, wine in it. And he's all red. The colors are very significant. The legs of the tables are shaped like A's. Popes or Pepes. Foots exposed. Here we have a plethora of flowers. I see a dandelion right there. I see could be cyclamen. That's hard to tell. Looks like uh, lilies of the valley. The tree of life is etched on the book. And there's sort of a rainbow peeking out from this thing behind her. Or a sun or something. She has the uh, moon, and almost her crown is two levels with a veil. She's looking right at you. We have the two columns on either side here. There's also a hidden sphinx there. Um, very, um, the style is, I think it's technically called Nubian. The wing there with the thick braids, very Egyptian. Um, like a headdress, the sphinx, it's winged. Um, her hand is, um, he pays attention to, to the digits of the hands and they do different things. So here it looks like we have the fingers extended and the pinkies extended with the other two um, pulled in. Rippling of the cloth, the blue, the white, the foot on a green little cushion, and then we have that checkerboard, lovely floor there. The Empress. Here we have um, scenes in these, actually I have never seen, I haven't noticed this before. Scenes in the bottom which look like there's chariots, justice, and they even say words. Oh, 
A little, I can't, it's hard to make them out, but this is uh, Loika, Posia, Ka. Hmm. can't read those. That says L O I C A, Loika, and Posia. Geometria, which to me is the Mantegna cards, um, but they're around the base. We have a moon, the foot's on the moon. Shield, the throne looks like angel wings. She's staring right at you with the uh, multi starred crown. Scepter, red, it looks like a heart there almost. Hmm. One of the Mantegna cards, some of the extended Mantegna down there. Four. This crazy hat here um, with the eagle on it. The world, scepter. He's in, uh, he's got a medallion of the sun. Crown there. And it scoops, that scooping is what you see in a lot of the Marseille decks, where the emperor has had sort of scooped. Um, it looks very, it looks like this could be a person, like the, it's, the figures are just too, too, too perfect of something. We have the elements here, we have wind, air, earth, fire and water, looks like hands there, a city on fire, a sinking ship there. Oh, do you notice? Oh, there's a tulip, maybe? A tulip there? Was there? Yeah, I didn't see a flower on the Empress. Oh, well, there's one on the. There it is. Right there. It's figurative. Hmm. Let's see, this is the Pope. Uh, triple crown, the two columns that were the. harken back to the. Jewish temple. We have scenes. We have two monks here kneeling, and there are other figures here. There's a peacock, and it's hard to make the other trumpeter. It's hard to make this out. We see sort of a tri symbol there, and look at this staff. This is quite interesting. The zigzag, um, like a lightning bolt, there. He has, I think his face is absolutely hideous. If I walked in, if I encountered him in the middle of the night, down the hallway, I'd freak out. Uh, let's see. It's always neat to notice new things in these cards. Hmm. So, the, of course, the plants there, the vines. Mm -hmm. Lovers, blindfolded, um, cupid, uh, minotaur, uh, cupid, um, centaur, there we go, cupid centaur, which is kind of, uh, very different, um, so we have a man, woman, they're shaking hands, the land looks a little different, it looks like he's coming from here. She's coming from there. Two different fantasy worlds. She has like cabbages at her feet, almost. He's very fancy dressed. She's more, uh, not as fancy. The arrow's pointing to her. He's sort of looking up that way. There are these parrot wings sort of encompassing that. chariot. Here, which is very different, we see the full horse, not just the front end, we see the full horse, black and white, and they are really, I mean, look at the eyes of the black one. And it looks like there is a map of probably Italy. We see some plants there. 
There's like a lighthouse or a tower or a ship, walled cities, and then the star, canopy of stars. The person in the chariot has a little dainty finger on just a ring that the reins are being held. We have the wheels there, but look, there's a wheel up here and a wheel down there. So we would assume that the wheels are huge on that. It almost looks like it's floating, like very much Apollo-like over the land. Look at the, and there's that hand again. Um, it could be the double horns because he has a card where he's, the death card, you'll see it. It's kind of the, the, the funky comedy thing. Look how dainty that is, the little gold ring holding the reins. Eyes of the horses, those look wild, those look normal and the tails making that sort of, there's a symbol in the middle, very symmetrical. Uh, justice staring at you, it looks like a, a crown almost looks like it's, it's triple crown, there's a knight there, there are sun, There's people here. It's hard to see. Someone looks like stamping grapes. Someone's killing a cow or something. That one's a horse harvesting wheat. This one looks emaciated. Something's not right there with exposed breasts, but you can see the lines underneath, almost like the chest is sunken. We see the it looks like there's wine or something in the scales. Pointy sword, blue, yellow, red, folds of cloth. Hmm. And look, he's like a giant over the world. We have one of those uh, traditional whale dolphin creatures that look oh, absolutely nothing alike. It's even a little paper boat with Luigi's Capini on it. Here we see some sort of pumps in the, this would probably be maybe Venice, maybe or the coast of Italy, I would think. There's a mountain, and there's a, if you look, the staff, there is a snake, but the staff is actually a flower, looks like a rose with um, there, the double, there's a lantern which looks like a censer, uh, you know, the, the Catholics use. He looks like a Greek priest, though, with this hat, the green and the blue, and it looks like it's covering a golden skirt. He's barefoot. But there's that snake, Caduceus. Wheel of Fortune. Blue person. So, kind of drowned water baby fiery person, and look, there's an old man who's at the bottom. His crown's falling off, crown is there, person on top sitting pretty. Fortune is blind, and we have the zodiac represented in the wheel. Old man, he has on his forehead, uh, it looks like a, an eye or maybe a wound, and there's veins there on his arm or a tattoo. And his hand is um, uh, very, looks arthritic almost. Hands there. Blue baby's kind of smurf, smurf baby. Um, you know, garb, angel with blindfold, sort of the dove, the crown, the waves. Your strength. So I love the depiction of this. And here, if you notice in the background, there is a figure of a man with like the sun behind his head. And there's wheat in the front. So we have this, and he, oh, and he has a lyre, lyre, Y-R-E, which would mean that is Apollo. Um, so he's there in the background. She has 
her hands on the um, the lion. So the lion, you a lot of times it's like, is she um, is she trying to close it or open the mouth? And it's up to interpretation. Is she opening or closing? She has her hand on the bottom part of the jaw, and her hand is open there. She's gripping the bottom. So is she closing it, or is she holding it open? Um, and he's staring right at her. It's very docile. It does have sharp claws, though, but it is not using them. Beautiful tendrils, hair. And she has stars on her gown. It's very, very tiny, but it's a blue with a star background. And here we have a lot going on. We have uh, grapes, the hangman, uh, coins falling out, silver and gold, silver on this side, gold on the other. A sort of whirlpool of colors as they fall into the water. Here we have a, a slaughtered lamb, the pelican. And remember, with pelicans, the old myth was that it would pierce its own chest to feed its children, which it's, it's feeding its children right now. There are tools there. There's hammer, pincers, pliers, nails. What is that? I can't tell what that is. Our work is so tiny. Looks like some sort of uh, snake lizard biting its own tail. And there's the blood. So, blood, 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 blood on the nails. There are three nails there. So, blood and wine. Of course, we have the grapes. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, back to the cars. After my battery exhausted, the battery in this camera does not last long. So here we have the death card. We have a painter's uh, palette there. That could be the man. There's the sickle. We have a crown. There's looks like a papal crown there. Um, and then we have there's the devil hands that are kind of hidden in there. Crow. I love the sort of the sort of crazy. Um, crazy type skeleton that's there. Let's look at there's some stuff going on down here. Um, there's some plants. The heads seem to be still alive. Two fingers. What is he with the crows there? The hands look like and they're very delicate, just kind of there, playing the, the sickle like an instrument, staring right at you. Here we have temperance. Here we have uh, a reference to John the Baptist there, baptizing Jesus. There's a little paper boat again, which we've seen. Um, now there's a flower that's dropping its petals. Foot's on a stone, foot is on the brick, the dove of the spirit. And we have a moon urn, silver to gold. And that is a lion. There's a diadem there. Wings are teal. And the devil, I love these. She's strutting, he's strutting, and they have their part animal, the hooves, and there's like bricks there, the fire coming up. He is, he has a mouth there. He has a sword or torch, but there's his hand, staring right at you with the horns. Scaly legs, 
It looks kind of bow-legged. Uh, breasts. Beard. And the guy, it looks like, it's almost like they're dancing disco. I mean, she's thrusting forward, he's thrusting back, throwing his hands up. Ah, the Fallen Tower. The color scheme here reminds me a lot of the Toth Tarot. We have a, pers a blonde-headed person there. Are they blonde? And there's three faces there. Faces there. Swirling. Houses upside down. Person falling. The crown. Face. Oh. And this is a sun. Cosmic event. There's a star, almost like a bolt. Breaking the top open. And there's like toys and stuff. There's even an alien spaceship. There's a, a stoplight falling out. There's another, it looks like a... Mm. Yeah, jacks. Like, like kids' toys are falling out. Mm. And it's, there's steps there. It's, it's, it's almost like an Escher-type building. This one always was kind of a silly card for me. I think she's looking like, why are you looking at me? Um, again, we have a little paper boat, which is always cute. She has a flower there, um, an urn, and then a smaller one there. Clouds. It's almost, again, like she's a giant. And there's the sort of tree there. No funny little bird, though. No. And we have the moon, eclipse, sun. Sun, there's an eye. There's some different figures here. There's almost there's the star. And the eclipse. Um, she's covering herself up. She doesn't look pregnant. But she has this long, blonde, stringy hair. It's covering her. The urns look Grecian. Maybe? Maybe that's a stretch. The moon card. I love love, love, love this moon card. It's, it's crazy. It also has sort of the, um, sort of the Grand Vizier, the, uh, the court astronomer there with the telescope and, and, um, since standing on one of those towers, we have Anubis and we have, I believe that's the she-wolf that fed Romulus and Remus, founders of Rome. Here we have a star the moon, sort of a star coming out of it, sort of an eclipse with clouds. We have the drops. We have this huge crab, which looks like a video game boss. Just a bony armored bastard. There's some cattails there, because they do, they're in the water. Um, there's a path that leads off into the distance. Snakes back there. Looks like the towers of Pisa. The crab is crazy though. The sun. Two children. I love this card. The, the horse is really well done. There's the colorful bricks. The leer. An egg. Um, a circle. That's supposed to reference the first wall in Rome. This could be, um, whenever you see like two kids, two children, it's like a Gemini. Um, uh, a Gemini kind of hint, and the uh, first wall in Rome. And the sun, he has the curls looking up, the banner. The child's actually holding the sun, holding it, and the white stallion. And there's judgment. We have Death, Zombie Man, this beautiful, crazy angel with the trumpet, Michael, um, plain, fiery hair. She's covering up her nudity, her nakedness. He's, it's, there's some stuff going on in the hair. Sometimes there are words hidden, like Henry or, or you know, um, Hebrew name for God. Um, there's something poking out there. 
Well, there's like a little Luigi Scapini thing, like a little note left. Oh, it's a hand. Okay. I was looking for something silly. Yeah, these cards, sometimes you'll just, oh my god, I never noticed that before. Because there's just so much going on, and that's his style. So here's the last card. It's gorgeous. So we have the four uh, beast, the bull, lion, eagle, falcon, and the angel. Sort of a kaleidoscope of colors here. Phases of the moon, fire, water, air, all that. She's standing with a black and white baton. Hair is covering her up, preserving her modesty. There's the world right there. And if you look, right in the middle, well, there's Italy. So right there, showing you a nod to Italy. Anyway, so that's the major arcana, just a closer examination of them, which I think they're fascinating. And if you just a quick flip through of the other ones. I mean, they're just as gorgeous. Beautiful. Lots going on. Like, oh, look at that. Ten of Swords. These widows are like screaming. There's even a fly there. And the daggers and the Roman senators. It's an allusion to, of course, killing Julius Caesar. Really good cards. Fun cards. They're definitely anything but boring. I always highly recommend this deck if someone says, give me a deck that, that I want to, you know, that I, I really want to, like, you know, sink my teeth into. And not, it doesn't take itself, like, 100% serious. Even though this, these are amazing cards, you can be really serious with them. But anyway, I just thought I'd talk about it because it is always one of my favorites. Always on my list of ones I recommend. Anyway, thought I'd share, so thanks for watching.